Welcome to the David Ofula YouTube channel, the official home of politics, where we cover policy, war, cataclysmic world events, and traverse territory that our peers fear to tread upon. Just the other day that we talked about the Pandora's box that could be opened if the executive decides to go on a full-out war with the judiciary. And based on my assessment, this war has already reached the tipping point because of such comments from the National Assembly Deputy Speaker, Gladys Boss Cholet. Roll the tip. We know we have had some setbacks relating to the judiciary, but myself and a few senior counsel, we have agreed, leave it to us. We are your foot soldiers. From, to, from Monday, I shall begin to work on it. It will never happen again. I will not tell you what we will do with them, but we shall deal with the ignorance of the judiciary. I have never failed you, and I will not fail you on this one. So take heart that it shall be done and your policies shall pass. Asante sana na mungu wa bariki. Now, I doubt that statement by Sholei had more of a positive impact than negative because as we speak, the High Court already nullified the Social Health Insurance Fund that was mandatory to all Kenyans. It was then subsequently appealed by the Ministry of Health under CS Nehumicha and as we speak, the Court of Appeal has refused to lift those orders and it's going to stay active until Friday next week when that case will finally be ruled upon. Now, this is of course courtesy of a three-judge panel uh, composed of Justice Patrick Kiage, Pauline Yamwea and Ngeye Masharia. Now, in this video, I want us to look into the SHIF and some of the challenges facing it in order to determine whether it's a positive or a negative to this nation. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, let's start off with some of the positives of this social health insurance fund. Number one, this fund is designed to improve access to emergency care, thus avoiding situations where accident victims without the means to pay are either turned away from hospitals or hospitals are forced to bear costs without proper compensation after. I think one of the challenges that we also saw during the Uru Kenyatta government was these big hospitals where most of the specialists are. They were turning back people who are using NHIF because they know you'll come here with your NHIF, we will render a service to you worth even 200,000 and the government will default to pay. The medical staff need their salary, be it nurses, be it doctors, be it the gatekeepers at those hospitals. So NHIF was becoming a liability that no medical facility wanted to touch. And I would know that because at that point I was in the eye industry, which is still under the medical uh, umbrella. And we would never accept insurance from NHIF. I don't know if that changes with SHIF. I'll do some calls to find out. But NHIF was a nightmare and many people were not served because of using such an outdated insurance. Let's give SHIF time to see if that'll be able to be resolved. Now, the second positive of the SHIF is that it facilitates the allocation of resources to primary healthcare, also known as PHC. Now, this is a very significant breakthrough from the former NHIF that had privileged tertiary and secondary care. For instance, in the NHIF, someone in job group T had more funds in dental, optical, and so on. But that of a common monainchi was very basic. But with PHC receiving regular and equitable funding, this means that PHC will be capable of meeting up to 90% of the population's healthcare needs. Also, PHC turns out is cost effective with a return of investment of up to 16 shillings for every one shilling spent. And on the upside, PHC is equitable. It's reaching more people, especially the poor. But everything that has an upside has a downside. So what are some of the negatives of the SHIF? Now, one of the main negatives comes down to general lack of information on some issues. For instance, I've read the act page to page, and I, for one, am not too sure how this social health insurance fund is going to be financed. The bill indicates that some financing will come from government revenue allocations, which is a good idea. Based on the amendments I've seen, we now know that the greater bulk of the financing will be obtained primarily through premium 
premium contribution. In other words, we might just fund this thing out of our own pockets. But from the taxes that we already pay, none of it is going to be routed to the SHIF fund. We'll need the CS of Health to clarify on this issue in all honesty. The other negative is that it is a mandatory contribution for all Kenyans, which is capped at 2.75% of your salary. And that is where the problem comes in. There are people who have their own insurance. They are having a Madison, AAR, Britam, Jubilee, Cigna, whatever it is, there are people who are having their own private premium insurance for their family. So paying for that and then having to pay for SHIF, which is now mandatory, some people are feeling that that is not fair. They feel like they're being conned. I already have a premium insurance, private one that's serving me well. Like I know Jubilee is one of the best. You get approvals in record time, but then you're now also having SHIF. So that's one of the major drawbacks. The second is the fact that it's capped at 2.75%. The 2.75% is not constant for all Kenyans. For someone earning 100 bob per month, that is 2 shillings and 7 Cent. If you're making a hundred thousand, that is two thousand shillings, seven hundred and fifty. If you're making a million, that's twenty seven thousand five hundred shillings. So it varies across the economic divide. And the rich are the ones who are now feeling the pinch and they're complaining. Because imagine if you're making a billion a month, that's quite some money you're contributing to SHIF. So the fact that it's not capped at a certain number, it's capped at a percentage. The rich are feeling antagonized and uh, they are not too happy about this. But personally, I feel two point seven five percent is not bad. It is doable my only problem is that it is mandatory you're paying for madison or britam and you're still paying for shif so we are looking to see how this thing unfolds also the fact that uh, it is tied down to other services like i covered in an episode yesterday for you to get your insurance cover for you to get your driver's license or renew it rather you have to prove that you're compliant with the shif so it's it's really uh it's quite something but either way guys that's just my opinion do let me know your own comments in the comment section below do you feel the pros outweigh the cons or the cons outweigh the pros i'll do my best to read your comments and to give you a response now in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david wafula hit the subscribe button you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.